Although the flow of fluids can be accurately described by the Navier Stokes equations, analytic solutions remain unknown to us for almost two centuries. Currently, the only alternative to costly experimental analysis of complex flows are computational fluid dynamics, or CFD for short. Besides lower costs, CFD offers many advantages to traditional modeling, such as the ability to test full-size models instead of scaled versions, and since it is generally faster to make a computational model than a physical one, results are obtained faster using CFD. Now, what exactly is CFD? CFD entails the discretization of time, space, and the Navier-Stokes equations. This turns an unsolvable system of partial differential equations into a large set of ordinary algebraic equations, the flow field into a set of volumes called cells, and time into small discrete time intervals. Although CFD has a lot of advantages, it does have its flaws. The main one being that in order to fully simulate complex flows, a large amount of cells and small time intervals are required. This increases the number of equations to be solved, which in turn increases the computational power and time needed to obtain a solution. Small cells and time intervals are required in order to fully capture the fluctuations that are a result of turbulence. The way to mitigate this is by developing equations that can model this complex phenomenon. The goal of my thesis is to apply one such turbulence model to a complex mixing of a cold main flow and hot side flow in a T-junction shaped conduit present in cooling systems of nuclear power plants. This flow is of a particular interest because the elbow before the T-junction introduces a pressure gradient as a result of centripetal acceleration. This pressure gradient creates Dean vortex swirl switching, which causes uneven mixing of the cold and hot flows which creates fluctuating thermal stresses that can lead to catastrophic failure via high cycle thermal fatigue. This is especially dangerous since the failure of a cooling system can lead to a meltdown. The very same flow was simulated using the large eddy simulation model for turbulence and the required 80 million cells. By implementing the eddy resolving Reynolds stress model by Akilich and Maduta, the number of cells will be reduced significantly, but will still require up to 96 cores from four computational nodes of a supercluster to be calculated. And my goal is to see if the results match the results of the large eddy simulation. 